Have you ever wondered how you can multiply your money? Have you ever thought about what it would mean to not have to work for more money, for more money? So this is what we're going to get into today. A lot of times people think when you get a lot of money, then you'll start managing it. But nothing can be further from the truth. You need to manage your money in order to get more of it. So before I get into five ways that you can actually multiply your money, I'm going to read you a story. In Matthew 25 verse 14, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called on his service and delivered goods to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded them, and he made another five talents. Likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of the servants came and settled accounts with them. And so he who had received five talents brought the five other talents saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents and I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. You know, I'll give you more. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered me two talents. I have gained two more talents. His Lord said again, well, well done, good and faithful servant. Yada, 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 went through the whole thing. And then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you'd be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. I was afraid I'm going to hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. So you have the one that you gave me. Okay, we're not even going to go into all of that. We are actually going to go into Luke 19, 11. So he says, now as they heard these things, he spoke another parable because he was near Jerusalem because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. Therefore, he said, a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So he called 10 servants. It's a little different. We got 10 servants here instead of three. And delivered to them 10 minus. So each of the 10 got 10 minus and said to them, do business till I come. Citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. Okay, and so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, he commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him that he might know how much every man had gained. Then came the first saying, Master, your mina has earned ten minas. And he said to him, well done, good servant, you're faithful. Same, same thing, right? And the second came saying, Master, your mina has earned five minas. Likewise, he said to him, you also have five cities. And then the other came saying, here's your mina, which I have kept put away in a handkerchief for I feared you. Same kind of situation. So what I really wanted you to pay attention to is in the first story, in the first parable, the servants said, I have gained more, right? And in the second story, he said, the mina have gained more mina. So here we have a situation where in the first parable, what it looks like is that they had to work to multiply what was given to them. They got money and then they had to work to add more money to that, right? But in that second story, you had mina that earned more mina, right? So in our contemporary language how I conceptualize that is money earned money right so we were talking about how to multiply your money how to get more money without always having to work this is a pillar of me a financially lit black girl and I told you we were going to go over five of them the first one is having a high interest 
savings account. So this is not going to bring you a lot, but it is going to be better than having your money sit in a regular checking or savings account, especially right now. We, we are seeing interest rates as, as big as 4%, whereas a checking or a regular savings account has 0.0% four percent okay so they have calculators that you can go on and and if you put in the amount that you let sit how much interest will grow in there again this is not going to grow your money a lot but it's going to be better than just letting it sit there the second way that we're going to talk about how your money can grow is or how to multiply your money is education and skills development a lot of us have taken out student loans in order to go to school and the goal of doing that was to be able to use the education and the skills that we got to have a higher income versus if we did not do those things right education and skills development doesn't have to be school it could be getting a uh, certificate it could be going to a trade the point is that you're paying a certain amount and once you pay that amount whether it be money whether it be time that you're able to come with those skills and with that education and then you're going to be able to make more money as a result the third one is to actually start a business so it's kind of the same thing right you start a business you put some money into the business and then your business could potentially you, you want it to <laughs> make a profit to where you are gaining more than you actually put into it. We live in such a digital age that you can do this almost on autopilot where you do the work one time passively, right? And then you still get paid for it. So that is definitely a way to multiply your money. If you use a certain amount of money to do a job one time and then you are continually paid off of that thing, you are multiplying your money. Number four is real estate. Investing in a property Property, paying for a property once and then either renting it out or keeping it long enough for it to appreciate past way past the amount of money that you pay for I kind of chuckled there to myself because that is the experience I had as a first-time homeowner at 28 and then selling my home 10 years later I literally more than doubled the money that I invested at the time and so you think about doing that on a grand scheme or having more than one home or like I said renting these homes out and it could be personal or commercial so I would say property is not just about your home where you live but this is definitely a way to multiply your money and then last but not least I think that it's the most untapped especially as a pertains to being a black girl is to invest in the stock market. You can do that in your Roth IRA, you can do that in a 401k, but you can also become a trader. You can find different companies that you are frequently shopping there, companies that you think are going to do good, and you can actually invest in that company and get a profit where, just like the story of the miners, the money is making money. The miner is making money. You put the money in, you don't have to do anything, but let it grow. So I want to issue a challenge for you. If you have never purchased a stock on the stock market that's my personal challenge to each and every one of you because black people and black women in particular are again one of the lowest percent of people who are exchanging money in the stock market which means that we are not receiving those gains that are available to us when we learn how we can play in that field it's important because if you don't learn how to make money in your sleep then you will work until the day you die, right? That's more about it. We need to learn how to stop exchanging time for money and get money to make money. So if you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, and come back for more.